in making the use of 1D convolutional neural network uh, in order to detect uh, the irregular heart rhythms that is uh, the arrhythmia. Uh, so yeah, so basically uh, till now what we have done is we have come across uh, uh, the classifications and we are uh, we're basically uh, we were able to calculate the uh, confusion matrix and uh, we developed uh, like I don't think so this is the code I need to so yeah basically we were able to normalize uh, and uh, uh, produce the uh, what it say uh, confusion matrix after uh, sampling uh, the classes and uh, uh, and training a neural network so this yeah this is the neural network basically so there are few more things that yeah, that are needed to be done uh, like uh, adding the dropout layers and uh, maybe uh, trying a different uh, number of epochs and also we need to do that so basically our model is uh, ready because we can we are getting the output uh, but yeah we need to optimize it uh, even better so yeah working in notebook kind of service and you are training that model so so suppose uh, from external resource you want to predict an image okay so what you need to do is first export that model uh, and uh, if you are going for android app say it's an android app so you need to include that model in your Android app. So you have to ship the model with your package, with your Android package. And it is, uh, I think it's not feasible because usually this model uh, gets around more than 500 megabytes. Okay, it depends on how much, ne how many neurons you have used. Uh, but uh, almost it's more than 500 megabytes. Okay, for our case, it was uh, one gigabyte. So shipping directly that model to the Android app is not feasible, I guess, because who can in install the app in on the go situation, right? So uh, for this for this scenario, we need must need to uh, build the backend first. So what uh, your app will be doing is um, it will be sending some get or post requests with the image and. The, in the back end it will predict the result and it will uh, return the response okay so this is the feasible architecture and I want to um, talk about so I that want to use REST API yeah yeah right this get so REST API can be easily implemented in Android also if I'm not wrong yeah 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 of course but uh, in meantime you need to have the back end right because your yeah. Android will be talking to some back end server exactly yeah, so backend server uh, for our project also uh, we use Flask. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what is exactly will be going on here is in Flask you need to implement that logic. Like uh, the, it will have the REST API, uh, it will accept the request and it will return the response, right? Mm -hmm. So if, if you are going to make this whole backend service, then only front end will not take much more time because front end also will have some uh, get request it will send the get request and it will return it will not be more than 30 minutes to one hour I, hardly i guess to make the uh, web application if you complete the backend app so either you go go for android app or you go for web app you have to make the make the you have to make the backend service fast okay so after the backend service is made it's only about one hour or two hour might be uh, to make the front end front web front end web application, uh, suppose you are you are going for only HTML CSS application, simple mm -hmm. HTML CSS JS application, it will not be more than uh, two hours, I guess. And then uh, then also you can uh, uh, go for Android app. You can develop the Android app, which will be talking uh, uh, with uh, REST APIs with your backend server. So backend server is the main component or the central architecture you have to. Uh, create and it, it takes time so either you go for android or uh, front end web application it doesn't matter you have to focus on the back end application first because your model will uh, predict the image in the back end not the front end 
and if you want to uh, like i said if you want completely to make it make it in android then you have to satisfy the that's uh, so it's clear right hmm. okay so uh, yeah that's as i said uh, you are more comfortable with android uh, than html then so i thought to uh, so it no it is very good very go, good you, you might go for go with anything but at first you have to make this backend okay, and if the backend part is done after that uh, there is very very less uh, less time we take to uh, in fact we can also divide the work among us and one can do html the other one can go with android yes right so but we have the backend yeah the first thing is you need to have backend then it's very simple thing because either you go for android or html you will be requesting with some image maybe it's post request with your image and your server will make the response and it will show to your either android app or html or css anything you can do. Uh, and uh, and here you can use uh, for web app you can use react react or angular angular okay or flutter uh, to make it more versatile or you can uh, go for native android at anything because we have uh, one similar protocol to call the backend service that is rest api okay hmm. so uh, it doesn't matter uh, f for front end application which technology you will be using uh, either either you can use flutter or you can use android native or you can use react or angular or whatever else but first you need to take care of the backend service because this is the main thing and this and i guess the most easiest uh, way to implement it is on uh, flask either you can go with django but flask will be more uh, easy is here okay. so think about the backend service first after that you can go with the front end thank right. you devojyoti for summarizing thing.